you know, what this the game fuck is Death uh, Loop? Yeah, and that's the question that I uh wanted to answer for myself and Death Loop is a game that is sort of like Kill Bill meets uh, some, you know, time loop thing. You play as someone who has to figure out a way to kill a bunch of targets, they're called visionaries, mm -hmm. in a one-day sequence. Now, it is not oh, like one like one run essentially in, right? in one sort of run and okay again like that is a really short uh uh elevator pitch for the amount of stuff that is actually inside of this game um what i've played uh there's a lot i don't think i can discuss just yet because like gersman said the the restrictions here which which I do understand the, the the intensity of these restrictions, just because there's a lot that they want to kind of keep um, and and kind of save for everyone to explore and find out for themselves. Which I think is you know it's a good idea to do that. Yeah, that's that's yeah, and, and especially in a preview uh, context, like that's not abnormal. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So um, so that is the the general sort of gist of this game. But it is not a game where you're just like recycling and recycling. And of course, we can't help but think of something like 12 minutes, which, well, that is exactly what you do in that game. Uh, and this is not that. They've somehow figured out a way, kind of remarkably, to make the idea of a time loop feel like a linear progression in a video game. Hmm. Uh, there is a okay. lot of going back. Like you do, so you basically visit a bunch of different locations and each location has a day night. So you can decide when you want to go visit a place and the place changes depending on day or night. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. You can start rolling. Is out. it easier and, than it looks? Um, depends on what you're trying to do as you make your way through all of these different levels and you will visit them obviously again, but you have different tasks and different objectives that you most likely will be assigning to yourself because you're trying to figure out what to do next or how to locate these targets. And and tying all of that together is a very arcane ass first person uh, shooter that mm -hmm. is, uh, I would say, not super, uh, not as super stealth reliant as, as that pedigree, but um, definitely, uh, you know, present. But there is a good amount of first person shooting in this game, and you can kind of decide how you want to take that on. Um, okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, you know, is there when you think about Dishonored and stuff like that, you know, there's the like the non-lethal run and stuff like that. Like, is that is that so? so you, you're making it sound like that that's not even really an option per se, I'm, or or like how I'm you would sure really want to do it. That. I'm okay. sure people be, will be doing that. I think when you start to take down these visionaries, these targets, I don't know how easy that is going to be to do something like that. Uh -huh. uh, I've only taken down one, and that is that's, that'll be at the end of this little gameplay here. Um, but as you take these visionaries down and you take down other people in this world, that is when you start to unlock the powers. And that is where a lot of that dishonor stuff starts coming back where okay. you have a, you have a, something called teleport shift stuff. that lets you teleport forward. Um, I, I collect something at the end of this run called, I forget what it's called, but it basically lets me like chain two enemies together and whatever happens to one of them happens to the other one. Um, well, that was so, too, I think, yeah. 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 Mm. So, so there is that sort of stuff in this universe. Um, I, there, like I could have been playing this part of the game already with some of those powers because I could have come back, collected those those abilities, and then brought them back to this world. Uh, uh, so that is, again, like there's a lot going on here. This is a this is a pretty complicated, very fresh idea. What I've seen so far, the sort of, you know, five plus hours that I've put into this, it is surprising me, uh, you know, uh, at, at, at sort of every turn. And, and I'm discovering the kind of agency that is going to be left on my shoulders to figure out, like, how to put all of these pieces together. It's super yeah. heavy. It's very, it is, it is, it almost feels like, get shut up with this game. But from what I can tell so far and what I've done, like... <laughs> They're they're kind of pulling it off, and it's 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 kind of fascinating. Uh, 
So you know, are I you in I, some time theme park? Like all the the time is your play thing, like like the, this other stuff, like the the aesthetic of the world, like what? So this is a great question. So so I can't really talk about where. So you're basically on. You're in this specific area that's made up of a bunch of sub areas, and uh -huh. there is a time loop that afflicts this area, and it every okay. night it sets back to zero. Yeah. Um, and that is the loop, and everyone is aware of it, and everyone sort of has to has to uh, they 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 act and play the game as if you as it, you know everyone has that information together. So there's a situation. So you can, I've got a thing where I can die twice and rewind and come back. Um, okay. Right. And, and you're able to kind of select some of these perks uh and and play the game based on how all that uh how all that might magic back there okay so yeah, that was my next question this is the playstation 5. this is playstation 5. this is running at uh 1080p yeah got it okay so i'm obviously playing a lot of this sort of guns blazing um i think there's a i think you can get away with with the sort of hybrid play style uh, because mm -hmm. there isn't, you know, you do have the situation where, you know, alarms go off and you uh, alert, uh, you accidentally alert other enemies, but then things are enclosed enough where you can kind of get away with maybe being a little loud, but then having to to pop into stealth mode in the next like area. Kind of resetting to the next spot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's not yeah. not a pure stealth game. Like all games, uh, non-punishing stealth seems like where we netted out post yeah we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna Splinter make Cell. that leash pretty long yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's not a game breaker if you really get uh sort of screwed up there's a lot of these mm -hmm. titles in the game uh mm -hmm. they're in the beginning they're really effective and i they have not outstayed their welcome uh as far as i'm concerned nice. it is an interesting sort of way that you will yeah like that get another go another way sort of thing like majority of my experience that that is a useful bit of information um the more you visit locations, the more you kind of see more of the map and then decide and and feel more confident to explore those parts of the map. They really, really enforce the fact through literal text on screen, like, hey, don't worry if you don't see anything here. You're going to have tons of opportunities to come back and visit. Okay. Um, so I'm now making my way here uh, to the stronghold of this first uh, target named Harriet. And I it is mostly a, a guns blazing sort of thing, but um, this whole sequence sort of, I, I played this whole sequence out in, in one sort of bit and it worked yeah. out pretty well. Why you are get all these guys one, mannequins? Yeah, that, that stuff, uh, that's some more narrative stuff that okay. sort Check of hands off right now. Kinda, okay. Check right, the okay. doc, hold on, little control F thing again. Uh, you get this uh, uh, sort of scanner oh, hacker radio thing that allows you to hack certain items in the world. Cool. And that is a useful little gadget. And you're constantly seeing a lot of stuff that is just gated, right? That is just like, I don't know what this glitch, like this object in front of me there. Like, I don't know what that's about. I can't really interact with it now. I assume uh, that sort of stuff will reveal itself. Um, in my five hours, it has not yet. So. Now, are you tagging? Are you aiming down sites to tag enemies? Is that uh... correct? So you can okay. you can tag you can uh, it seems like a, a, a limitless amount of stuff that you can tag, cool, cool. Uh, which is great. You can actually also hold down the button to tag, and it'll even give you a few bits of information about the target. Say like, oh, they're using a basic kit. I mean that that icon that shows the weapon is pretty much yeah. all you need to know because you, you basically understand their range if they're you know a sniper or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, if their back is stabby, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. So I want to say I got away with a lot of shit in this little sequence here because of how oh, kind of aggressive I, it, I went in. That makes it in. fun. Yeah, that's great. It's, yeah, it was a lot, of, a lot of tense moments here. And you could see that sort of rewind arrow in the top left of the HUD. It says mm -hmm. one X. It says X1. I have one more death that I can use it'll rewind me to a, to a sort of, I'm not really sure what the checkpoint situation is, but it'll rewind you to a certain spot if I die again. And then you kind of have to start over. <laughs> they just look like and, stare at a blank wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's some of that for sure. Um, 
but I think I, the, so far that kind of like the vision cone stuff seems pretty good. Like right there is pretty, uh, you know, pretty aggressive, but but kind of mm -hmm. realistic in a way. And um, you know, th I think that stuff it'll it'll definitely force you. Like there's a couple times where you you do feel like you're in like someone's vision cone. And you're like, all right, you probably should have saw me. But again, like the the powers that you will get allow you to circumvent a lot of that stuff so it makes stealth and pulling off stealth a lot easier mm -hmm. you, right. see that? Now, you you mentioned kind of stealth and perks and and do you get the impression that it's like you're taking a finite number of those things as a loadout or are you just yeah. constantly adding powers so the beginning of every uh loop or uh death or sort of like visit through a world you get an opportunity to re-kit yourself and there are these trinkets they're called trinkets and those act as the perks so they can be gun specific or ability specific uh and you and you collect them in the world and you decide how you want to kit yourself out so i have one okay. equipped right now that allows me to double jump uh okay. there's one that oh, okay. lets you yeah. there's one that lets you um take less damage but also give uh uh you know give out less damage so mm. Some of that stuff is, is to prove. Yeah, it's just a lot of not just death loop questions, but personal existential criticisms, yeah. perhaps. So you know that kind of stuff is it, it's it's cool, right? Like, uh, I thought that would be gimmicky. Just I thought they would be show. a little lame, but it's helpful. And um, especially early on, like giving you some yeah. like some indications about hey, here's a way to approach this. Like that's that seems totally. kind of cool. There is a sliding uh, thing you can do too, which is really effective. Uh, it's pretty sneaky and quiet. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, gunplay feels good. Yes. It, uh, you know, you saw it before I was I was sniping pretty accurately, feeling it real nice, and mm -hmm. you know, there's so. Do you have impressions of, of how wide the arsenal is? Is it like, are you finding multiples of the same weapon and this one's like plus two? Or is it so, just like you have the pistol, so, you have the shotgun? Yeah, that's a good question. So there is, um, there's like a color based sort of loot kind of thing. Uh, oh. But there are, you know, but those are rare and it is not loot in the sense of like you're just kicking open crates. I mean, there are crates in this world and mm -hmm. a lot of them I can't access yet. And it does also seem funny the way i got to this level i kind of failed at a thing before it but it allowed me to show the level that we were allowed to show <laughs> so so it was you know deciding to not spend a lot of time in that level i'm assuming that level w would have unlocked another thing that would have been super useful here so i am gonna like go back and sort of see what that looks like and mm -hmm. you know compare it to, to this playthrough but uh again the the main goal that you are trying to head towards and who and i have no real fundamental understanding of how long that is going to take to figure out the move to kill all eight of these targets um but like it's just really it, it seems like it's putting a lot on your plate uh for better or worse yeah. but it, it's but i like i said I, i'm really digging it so i guess like my question is like do you you talked about it as like you know making death kind of feel like a linear or making the loop feel like still like a linear game but yeah do you get the impression and and obviously you haven't gotten there so you're you are just guessing but do you get the impression that this game ends with you making your perfect run through and getting all eight of these kills again like are you are you ever gonna have to kill harriet again or once this is done is it done i'm i think there's from what i'm sort of gathering is that you are gonna be doing things to like maybe get these people out of their maps and lining them up in like a centralized location okay. or you are, you know, like I assume, I'm assuming I'm not gonna fight Harriet in this little airplane hangar a lot. I feel like I'm gonna figure something out that's gonna maybe move her out of here and get her to a different map or something mm. like that is the vibe that I'm getting. There's a okay. lot I know that's a loaded kind of theory. Some of that's based in what I've seen. Some of that sort of guessing of how this is going to go. Yeah. But the, the the structure of this game and how they really uh, and there's Harry. I got Harry there. You know the structure and how it sort of feels like it's like 
They're setting you up to accomplish these tasks, realizing the connections between the objectives that you've made and, and you know, developing a strategy that lets you maybe melt all of it together a lot easier than having to go and find each one of these people separately. Yeah. Okay. So, like, imagine you, it's basically like flattening all the layers down. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is almost you doing recon and along the way you are killing all these people and learning about the world and then whether that's a, a narrative choice or just something that the story does on its own you will not play it the same way later on that is my impression right. and, okay. and, and yeah. that feels like a pretty safe bet about, about where this is going yeah. which which is why i'm you know i i feel good about saying how really inventive it does feel um so now so there's a, this is where our, the gameplay ends but I would now wake up back to the start, deep, which which I can't sh which we can't show you either about <laughs> where you start. Uh, but Damn. that is that is the loop. Uh, man, that's a tough. That is the straight up the <laughs> toughest game I've ever had to explain. Like it is, it is like that. It is just yeah. And the footage restrictions aren't doing you any favors. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, it's, but I get it, right? Like, uh, totally, you know, ideally, yeah. I would have collected a lot more stuff to be able to show off, but. You know the timing of all that it's it's tough to to make it happen but it's I, yeah. i'm i'm really enjoying it and i and man that front four hours where you are just trying to understand just what the hell this game is and all of these new ideas that they're throwing at you it's it is a difficult front-loaded experience but uh i feel like i've broken through that first layer of sort of you know confusion and and i am in a good place where i want to play that a lot right now so nice it's, uh, yeah, right. that's pretty great yeah that's cool it, it's one of those games that always look great in trailers but you were always just a little bit like i'm not quite sure and and in the back of my mind i'm always like if they go too far into majora's mask territory with this i'm out um but... yeah i mean look like i you know we are in like time loop game renaissance right and uh i just played through 12 minutes and that game got me real mad at time loops right and when you play that game and then you start playing this one you're sort of like fuck i hope we're not doing that i hope we're just not doing that trope thing where you're just like oh it was all you know but it it, it does not feel yeah. like that uh i am i'm happy to report so um cool yeah that's uh yeah. that's exciting 